Thank you very much again for joining us. We are here at the Regional District of Okanagan Similkameen. We're at the uh, headquarters of downtown Penticton. We're just working behind the scenes to make sure we can bring in all of our panelists for this upcoming briefing. And we are also going to bring in members of the media who will have an opportunity to ask some questions a little bit later on. Just a reminder, coming up in just a few minutes, we will hear from BC Wildfire and they'll provide the latest information on the Incomeet Creek Wildfire. And we'll also uh, as well talk a little bit about the Thomas Creek Wildfire and Brenda Creek Wildfire. I can tell you while we're waiting that the evacuation alert remains in effect for 704 properties for the Thomas Creek Wildfire and the evacuation order is in effect still for Brenda Creek Wildfire, that's 42 parcels. Now with the Incomeet Creek Wildfire, uh, from the RDOS perspective, you can find all the information you need on the RDOS Emergency Operations Center website. That's emergency.rdos.bc.ca. That's where you'll find a list of the evacuation alerts and orders that are in place right now. During this briefing, we'll find out the latest from the Soyuz Indian Band and uh, where those al evacuation alerts and orders are at. We'll also hear from the town of Soyuz and the town of Oliver. And uh, Quick reminder, it, the, the real details we're expecting are coming from BC Wildfire, but again, we won't begin uh, the official part until we can uh, get started and make sure we have everybody. But it looks like we do have Dale from BC Wildfire and he is joining us now. So I think with that, uh, we'll get started and then we'll bring in our other panelists and our media as uh, this briefing goes on. Again, my name is Eric Thompson. I'm an information officer with the Emergency Operations Center here at the Regional District of Okanagan, Similkami, the RDOS. We are joining you from the traditional unceded territory of the Silk people in the Okanagan Nation. And in just a moment, we will hear from BC Wildfire. Also expected to join us is Erica Louie with the Soyuz Indian Band. And that's part of the uh, Emergency Operations Center uh, that we'll be hearing from. Uh, Bill Newell is the Chief Administrative Officer and EOC Director here at the RDOS. He'll have a brief update for us. Uh, we're also anticipating hearing from Alan Chabot. He is the Chief Administrative Officer with the town of Soyuz, also from Soyuz is Jared Brownstein, Director of Operations. And joining us online, uh, listening in, and will be available during our Q&A portion later on, is Carla Kazakovich, RDOS Chair, and Electoral Area C Director, Rick Canoto. We'd like to thank them for joining us. And uh, we may also hear from OIB Chief and Council. Uh, we have Sue McCordoff joining us and other representatives from the uh, town of Osoyoos. And uh, Martin Johansson is with us as well, Mayor of Oliver. So with that, let's get going. We'll start with our BC Wildfire update, followed by a Q&A session. And we have Dale from BC Wildfire. Dale, go ahead with an update, please. Uh, thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I will do my best to give you an update uh, for what is a fairly dynamic situation and a lot of change going on. So uh, as of uh, this afternoon, we're estimating the fire to be approximately 2,000 hectares. Uh, we have uh, recommended uh, various evacuation orders and alerts to the local government area. All right. Um, at this point, we have a number of ground crews and heavy equipment uh, working on the fire. Uh, a lot of focus on the west and southwest flanks, uh, as you would imagine. Uh, that's where we have the most uh, exposure to the community. Uh, so a lot of focus on those flanks to, to try to protect uh, the homes that are, are nearest to, to the fire. Uh, currently right now, we are experiencing uh, rank three activity, um, primarily wanting to move up slope. A big change for today is uh, yesterday, we experienced winds out of the south that aggressively uh, pushed the fire, I think we we covered almost six kilometers in a matter of several hours. So that helps, uh, I think, um, everyone understand the, the truly aggressive nature of this wildfire. Uh, today, we're expecting the winds to come more out of the north, uh, which is, is what has prompted us to, to make some additional recommendations to the local government uh, fairly recently for the other side of the fire to ensure that uh, everyone's prepared in, in the event that this uh, incident starts moving more to the, the south uh, and, and the east there. So um, we do continue to try to draw resources into this incident. Uh, we have an incident management team that uh, will be coming into the region to, to take over command. Uh, they uh, just arriving in our fire center today. So 
uh, hopefully getting those folks uh, taking over the fire over the next uh, 24 to 48 hours there. Uh, we will continue to support the incident with aircraft where we have achievable objectives. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, the primary focus for our crews at this point, of course, will be uh, an attempt to protect the community uh, from, from any uh, wildfire losses. And that's about all I have for you at this point. Opportunity for media to join us. We don't see any just yet, but I just want to, um, before we go over to um, our other panelists, just ask a couple of very quick questions. When these types of wildfires happen, the public, of course, wants information as quickly as possible. The best way to get any information on this wildfire is to go directly to the BC Wildfire Service website, the dashboard. How often would you say that is updated so people know how current that information is as far as the actual fire behavior? Yes. Uh, so we, we typically only update that uh, several times a day. Um, certainly if there are major events, uh, like the issuing or the recommendations of an evacuation order or, or something like that. It, it may prompt a out of cycle sort of update, um, but uh, do understand uh, you know, the number of fires on the landscape. Uh, the crews are, are working out their hard and trying to do their best to provide updates as the day goes on, uh, but we are limited in the, to our frequency uh, as far as updating, uh, you know, beyond that uh, two to three times a day uh, on an incident like this. Well, I'd certainly like to, on behalf of everyone who's watching and all of our panelists, uh, thank you very much, everyone at BC Wildfire. I know it's a very challenging time and challenging conditions with the heat. We'll come back to you shortly if you can just stand by, please. But I'm going to go over to uh, Bill Newell now while we're uh, waiting for some of our other panelists to join us. Uh, Bill Newell is the Chief Administrative Officer and the Director of the EOC here at the RDOS. Bill? The regional district of Okanagan Sinokamine uh, issued an evacuation, or sorry, declared uh, a state of local emergency yesterday for electoral area C. Uh, we have just declared, uh, Chair Kozakovich has just issued a declaration for electoral area A. So uh, for the regional district, that is then sort of the uh, southeast portion uh, of the regional district. Uh, within that, uh, we then have uh, evacuation alerts on for the Thomas Creek fire uh, in electoral area D, and we now have uh, evacuation order uh, on electoral area C and alert in electoral area C, and uh, we're just working with BC Wildfire to determine uh, where they might go in area A. So lots of moving parts with regards to the fire as... Uh, BC Wildfire just indicated uh, it is volatile, aggressive. Uh, winds are changing, and uh, uh, as is normally the case in these situations, uh, we just adjust to it. It does not adjust to us. With the activity last evening, uh, so uh, the Asoyas Indian Band uh, and the Electoral Area C and the Town of Oliver uh, issued evacuation orders and our reception center was quickly set up at the Legion in Oliver. Uh, we've had great cooperation uh, 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 as far as the volunteers that work in emergency support services. So not only are the Oliver volunteers involved at the reception center, uh, also volunteers from Asoyas and Penticton uh, emergency support services as well. So uh, lots of cooperation there. Uh, the information flow between uh, the uh, two municipalities of Asoyas and Oliver with the Regional District Emergency Operations Centre uh, is intense and ongoing. Uh, we uh, put people in each other's uh, operations centre and we have lots of calls uh, up and down the valley. Uh, just trying to keep track of where the fire is and what the implications are uh, for our, our mutual constituents. So we appreciate that. Uh, with any evacuation order or alert, uh, the uh, contribution that is made by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and our search and rescue uh, operations, so uh, Penticton Search and Rescue, Oliver and Soyuz Search and Rescue, all involved in distributing um, evacuation order notices. 
we appreciate that. And uh, uh, again, uh, those are constantly uh, under scrutiny, as uh, Dale mentioned. So uh, it's always important that we keep up to date on that and uh, have the search and rescue crew uh, on our wing to actually deliver them uh, door to door. Well, we would uh, encourage those who have been uh, ordered out of their properties or who are on alert to register uh, with emergency support services and they can do that online at ess.gov.bc.ca uh, or they can go to the Oliver Legion in person and uh, uh, register and get additional information. Uh, the Oliver landfill is in the uh, evacuation order area and it has been closed. Uh, uh, we appreciate the support from the town of Asoyas, who has allowed us to uh, uh, send all of the uh, mixed waste uh, that would normally go into Oliver uh, down to Asoyas landfill. And uh, they've uh, uh, offered that up so that we can uh, make sure that we don't have any accumulation of solid waste. And uh, we'll uh, keep that arrangement going until uh, that evacuation order is lifted from the area that the Osoyas or the Oliver landfill is in. For the public, uh, please avoid any of the evacuation order areas. Uh, we do have private security and RCMP patrolling in the order areas uh, to keep people out. Obviously, uh, one of the concerns is that when people leave their homes or properties that uh, they're secure. Uh, so that's one of our responsibilities is to do that. Uh, early yesterday, as soon as we were informed that uh, the fire was moving uh, in the uh, uh, Area C and within the uh, Soyuz Indian Band, Alert uh, came online and have moved uh, several uh, both domestic and farm animals uh, out of the Alert and order areas down uh, to the desert center in Soyuz. Uh, lots of volunteers involved in that. And then, of course, we have uh, great uh, support from uh, the uh, uh, Provincial Emergency Operations Center up in Kamloops. BC Wildfire uh, is, uh, has been a great um, partner for us. We should say also that there are some uh, vital pieces of infrastructure in the order and alert area. Uh, Fortis had several pieces of uh, um, critical infrastructure damaged, and I believe that they were down uh, for a short while. They're trying to get uh, their infrastructure back up so they can recharge. We'll keep everybody advised on that. Uh, there was at one point a concern that the South Okanagan General Hospital uh, may have to evacuate. That has since been discontinued. Uh, they are not in the alert area. Uh, they will not be relocating. Uh, they are completely safe at this point in time, um, but obviously watching closely uh, both for fire and smoke, uh, which is a concern for uh, those vulnerable populations within uh, the health facilities. So IHA then uh, is uh, with us as well. So again, we uh, sincerely appreciate all of the uh, volunteers uh, and agencies that are working with us to make sure that uh, we can keep people as safe as possible. Thank you, Bill. Bill Newell is the CAO of the Regional District of Okanagan Samil Kameen, also the EOC Director. And a quick note, you mentioned power. Fortis is asking customers to reduce their energy use during peak hours of electricity usage. That would be between 4 and 8 p.m. and we'll have more information on that in just a moment. And uh, we would like to go now to the town of Asuyus. And uh, I believe Alan Chabot will be joining us, the Chief Administrative Officer, uh, representative from Asuyus, wherever that may be. Uh, please uh, jump in now with Ethan like to uh, share any of this. Sure. Yeah, thank you, Eric. Um, welcome from the uh, town of Asuyus. As you and others know, uh, the last 24 hours has been an extremely busy <laughs> time. Um, our fire rescue personnel were assisting BC Wildfire and Oliver near Tankamik Road and the Associates Cottages uh, into late last evening. They were returned to the hall and set up and ready to go again for today's start. I know that we had fire personnel on the fire ground and active in the field shortly after 4 a.m. And we 
came to work and established an emergency operations center to coordinate response and, and support for site at 5.30 a.m. At 7.30 a.m., the mayor declared a state of local emergency and our fire service personnel and others assisted to evacuate the campground, the Incomate campground, and uh, after that, uh, the Spirits Ridge Resort on the OIV lands to the east of town. Um, we later issued an evacuation alert for portions of town. Important to note, there is no evacuation order, but the alert covers an area that uh, the wildfire intelligence that we were getting suggested may be uh, threatened, and it's those properties immediately adjacent to the Soyuz Indian Band campground on Lake of Soyuz, an area that is bounded by everything to the east of Cottonwood Drive to the west of 45th Street and north of Highway 3. Um, we had the Soyuz and Oliver search and rescue deliver an evacuation alert notice to several hundred residents in that area this afternoon. Um, there was initially some confusion about where evacuees that were being evacuated from the OIB lands should go. Um, the emergency social services and the place to register is in Oliver and it's at the Legion. And people can also register online at www.ess.gov.bc.ca. It's important for anyone that's evacuated to register so that your needs can be taken care of. Emergency social services can be rendered. Uh, family members can often locate those who are displaced through those means. Um, we've had uh, tremendous offers of support from the local community to assist in our wildfire response. Um, really impressed with, with this community and its willingness to step up in its time of need. Um, we requested and been provided some specialized personnel from the Office of the Fire Commissioner to assist us to plan our response and our recovery from this event. And we've also ordered uh, additional equipment. We are a small department. We're being assisted by mutual aid and other departments, but we've uh, made requests for departments further afield to come and render assistance where necessary. We posted a little bit of information on our website, www.asuyas.ca. Under the spotlight, there is a link to wildfire information. We will continue to update it as new information becomes available. And if the evacuation alert for the area of town identified uh, is rescinded, We'll post it there as well. We'll attempt to deliver a notice. It's going to depend a little bit upon the time of day when that decision can be made. We'll continue to monitor the situation and help wherever we can. Um, my thanks to our emergency services personnel uh, putting themselves in harm's way, protecting our community. And that's uh, about it for me. All right, thank you very much. Unmute. Yeah, we're unmuted right now. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Alex. We appreciate that, CAO of the town of Asilius. And we are going to see if we can bring uh, Dale Bahara back in. He is with BC Wildfire Service. You see his screen has gone black. He's been working the phones. There is a lot going on right now, as you can well imagine, uh, with BC Wildfire. So if he's able to join us again, we'll ask for uh, just some closing comments. While we wait, um, I understand uh, there, there is Dale. Is. Dale, I appreciate how busy you are. If, if you wanted to give us any closing comments, uh, please do. Otherwise, uh, we'll just let you get back to work. Um, <clears throat> the one thing I would would just, uh, if we can help us with the messaging, we've had uh, a number of instances of folks, when an order comes in, uh, refusing to leave their property. Uh, we can end up in situations then when the fire encroaches and, and then uh, we have those same people uh, then feeling that they need support to get out of where they've stayed. And, and it puts our, our firefighters in a very, very difficult position. It pulls resources away from fighting fire and into, and I'm not saying specifically to this incident, but we've experienced it already on, on other incidents this year. I can't stress enough uh, at these current times, is it something that is extraordinarily difficult for our crews to deal with? while we're uh, stretched in trying to suppress the fire and then having to switch gears to to go and uh, you know check on people that have, have refused uh, to honor an evacuation order. 
uh, and and then are uh, sometimes suggesting we we divert resources then to protect them. So um, that's a critical piece for us. Uh, it, again, uh, that that's very difficult for our crews. It puts a lot of stress and puts them uh, in undue risk. Um, sorry, was that a question? Uh, no, sorry, we were just making some internal notes here. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, so that, that messaging there, um, uh, clearly we are seeing very aggressive fire behavior. Uh, we are under extreme fire load currently. Uh, so, um, yeah, just do, do recognize we are, we are stretched quite thin. We are doing our very best to, to give you the information uh, that you require. And, and certainly we, we do apologize if there are times that uh, uh, you're feeling uh, that you're not getting the updates as timely as you'd like. Uh, we're certainly doing our best with uh, with what we have on our plate right now. And then just a final note about uh, being in the operational area for anyone that's uh, on the water. Uh, we've got a Soyuz Lake and Skaha Lake. You've got skimmers coming in, helicopters. Very important people give a very, very wide berth to stay off the lake if at all possible. Yeah, there's that. And then uh, please, we're not looking for spectators. Uh, we've had numerous instances uh, up and down the valley with uh, the general public coming in uh, and trying to view the fires uh, at a very close perspective uh, and many times putting themselves in danger. Um, and again, uh, it's just like that previous situation. All that does is pull our resources from the important job and work they're trying to do. Uh, and uh, it, 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 it further hampers our effort. I'm sorry, I do have to go. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, that is probably uh, the best example of how intensely busy BC Wildfire is right now. Uh, the calls keep coming in. The activity keeps uh, intensifying. We want to keep providing some information for you. We had had uh, Jared uh, Brownstein listed as one of our speakers today with the uh, town of Osoyoos. Just want to check in to see if um, Jared wanted to provide an update. Otherwise, we'll head to Oliver and hear from uh, the mayor. Uh, is Jared standing by? He's right there. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, again, not much else to add to the Mr. Chabot's report. Uh, I do want to reiterate to the community of Osoyoos that we're, we're likely to start conserving water as well. Um, Try to limit your irrigation, et cetera, with the limitations on the power system. Um, we don't want to be start fighting people for, for power in regards to our production wells uh, to maintain our reservoir where they need to be. So if people could just you know, try to limit their water use, try not to water the lawns, try not to, to, to spread too much water over the, over the environment over the next in the well while we're fighting this fire. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to ask Bill, did you have anything else you wanted to add, Bill? Okay, we have, uh, as you see, we also have the chair of the RDOS, Carla Kazakovich, who's been uh, waiting and uh, watching as well. And yeah, and we have uh, Rick Canoto as well. He's the Area C director. They're just standing by in case we do have media questions. But Mayor Johansson with the Town of Oliver, go ahead, please. Uh, thanks, Eric. Um, I don't have much more to add to the conversation. Um, I mean, this fire's not even 24 hours old, and talk about dynamic, rapidly changing. Uh, it's it's been crazy to watch and move north and now move south down to Asuyas, uh, definitely increasing in size and uh, lots of concern for the community. We have declared a state of local emergency. Currently, we have a few properties to the southeast and the northeast on the edge of town that are in uh, evacuation alerts. We don't have any that are on evacuation order at this time. I would just like to say that our, our CAO has been working with our operational team to make sure that our infrastructure, our delivery of water in the community and for firefighting is being maintained. Uh, we're looking at emergency generators in some areas to make sure that we're able to do that in case there's additional power outages there. And just say a shout out to our local fire department and all the fire departments that stepped up to help. Uh, my understanding is there hasn't been any structures lost. There's been a few pieces of equipment that I've heard about, but at this point, I haven't heard about any structures. And I know there was some crews out there all night long protecting structures. So our guys are doing a great job. And uh, as uh, one person said, let's stay away and give them the room to work. That would be all I have to say, unless there's any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Johansson. I see uh, we have Erica Louie with us. She is with OIB, and I'll ask Danny if he can bring her in. I saw that uh, there was her name is shown in the uh, list. Her audio is 
not there, the audio is not working. Okay, if there's any way we can hear from OIB, that would be great. We'll certainly look at uh, hosting another one of these events um, in the coming days. Um, because information, as you know, is hard to come by. So for now, until we, unless we hear some uh, from the media as far as any questions, I just want to mention we did receive some information from Fortis, BC. Uh, their crews are supporting local emergency services personnel uh, in responding to this wildfire, the Inkamig wildfire. Uh, it's forced Fortis to de-energize parts of the electricity system. The system is still stable, but Fortis is operating on the upper end of limits. And that's uh, for their system today. And for that reason, they are asking customers to reduce energy use during peak hours of electricity usage. And that is between 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. Uh, Fortis does appreciate you helping keep the system stable. Some ways you can reduce your energy include cooking outdoors on barbecues, if possible, uh, washing dishes by hand, or setting timers on dishwashers to run after hours in the middle of the night, uh, running laundry later in the evening. And another option would be to reduce air conditioning use. Uh, Fortis thanks you for your assistance with this and uh, you can reach them through their website uh, fortisbc.com. So an important message there. And I see Erica's name has shown up and we're uh, hoping we can have her join us from OIB, you know, so you see the band. Just to reiterate a couple of other uh, notes while we have just a moment. Uh, the Thomas Creek wildfire, as you know, uh, if you've been following along, especially those people who are on evacuation alert, that remains in effect, that evacuation alert for 704 properties. The Brenda Creek wildfire, also in the regional district of Okanagan, Similkameen, the evacuation order remains in effect for 42 parcels, and the RDOS continues to monitor the situation, working with BC Wildfire Service, RDCO, that's the regional district of central Okanagan, and TNRD, Thompson Nicola Regional District, all evacuees, as Bill mentioned earlier, are asked to register. If you need services, you can go directly to the reception center at the Legion in the town of Oliver. And the reception, uh, the ESS uh, address is ess.gov.bc.ca. And due to a shortage of hotel accommodations, if you are on evacuation order, please consider making uh, arrangements with family or friends. Take your pets with you if you can and uh, making those arrangements while you're on evacuation alert is also uh, a good idea. And if you're looking for information about emergency support services, the number is 250-486-1890, 486-1890, and uh, that is uh, for information about emergency support services. Okay, so the latest now, I don't see that we have any uh, questions from our media, and, oh, we do. Uh, all right, and who do we got there? Let's uh, let's go to oh, there we go, Chelsea Powery, and Chelsea's with Castanet, and I believe Castanet was carrying this uh, briefing live on uh, their website. Chelsea, go ahead, please. Yes, we are carrying it live. Um, thanks for taking the time, everybody. Um, I just wanted to ask about uh, how many people do we have an idea of how many people have accessed emergency support services so far? Uh, numbers of people that are being put up places, uh, that that kind of stuff. Oh, we don't have that number offhand, but I certainly will uh, look into that for you and I can get back to you directly. Um, we are going to be putting out more information shortly and we'll be sharing some of those key messages and it is really helpful. We've had some really good support from local media, from uh, provincial media as well in getting these messages out, but um, I don't have the numbers offhand, but we'll certainly get that for you, Chelsea. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, and just to reiterate, while we have an audience here, um, we're broadcasting on YouTube live and you can uh, also see this uh, on tape delay, access at any time if you're looking for more information later on. But those messages we heard earlier from BC Wildfire, I think are really, really important that this is uh, aggressive fire behavior we're seeing. And for spectators who are in the area, you, know, you might not think that it's a challenge to be where you are, but if you're too close to the fire, uh, potentially putting first responders at risk and yourself, that's a real challenge. And um, also, if you are on evacuation order, I can only imagine how challenging that would be for people, and, and we've seen this in the Okanagan and other areas uh, so many different times, uh, but the evacuation order is in place to protect you and your family, and it's also there to protect first responders. So if you can follow the instructions when search and rescue or RCMP come to your door, it uh, certainly makes things uh, a lot better and safer. Yeah. Bill? Uh, so just uh, for Chelsea, uh, we have approximately 350 uh, Residents that have registered with uh, the Oliver uh, Reception Center. Okay, excellent. Thank you. 
Yeah, let's put a final call out to our media uh, if you have any other questions. And Okay, we have a couple of questions here in our chat, so I'll get to that right now. Uh, stand by. Uh, Brennan Phillips, have there been any structures damaged in the fire or those who were staying at Incomeet Campground or at Spirit Ridge Resort uh, do you, who do not have a residence in the local area, where should they go? So as far as structures, Bill, we don't know of any structures and that would be a BC wildfire question. There have been none. None? Okay, there you go. None damage that we know of. Uh, now for folks who are uh, at the campground or Spirit Ridge, um, in, where would they go in the area? To the Oliver Reception Center. And, and accommodations will be found at Accommodations possible. are being provided. Okay. For Thanks. those that were ordered out, Okay. Unfortunately, they're not they're not available for those on alert. But for anybody ordered out, uh, accommodations are uh, will be made available. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Danny is uh, operating behind the scenes here. Danny, do you see any other questions that we may have missed? No. Okay, so we're going to wrap it up then. Um, we so will be putting on more. Oh, no, that's a leftover hand okay. from Chelsea. Unless Chelsea had another question, I don't think she does. No, I think that was a leftover hand. So, so hi, uh, this is Erica from, Erica from sorry, OIB. This is Erica? Excellent. Uh, Erica. I do have a question in regards to just that last statement that was made. Uh, my understanding was it's only full time residents that are getting um, their needs, like if they need to find other accommodations. Anybody who's a guest, from my understanding, that's from out of town is asked to return to their hometown. That's true. That is that, correct. That's, that's the messaging that we were getting. Yeah, and that's what we understand. And can I just confirm, Erica, you're Erica Louie with uh, OIB? Yes. Are you able to provide any other updates or is, it, is there any message you'd like to share uh, with people who are watching this update? Um, so yeah, we just we just ended up getting a call not too long ago. The Oliver Fire Department has been uh, dispatched again. Uh, there are two houses uh, that were originally down where the fire had started that are um, kind of in the line of danger right now because of the shifting winds. Uh, mm -hmm. We haven't got any updates from them. They've probably been out on scene for about an hour. And then, uh, yeah, so all of our evacuation orders and that are still in, in, in effect. And we're just taking it uh, hour by hour. We're watching everything. Erica, if anyone is looking for information directly related to OIB, where would you recommend they get that information? And while I say that, I also want to put out the reminder, too, that the RDOS uh, is standing ready to provide support in getting information out to the public through the channels that we have access to as well. Yeah, so uh, we're getting information out. We've have uh, we had our team just in here right now, so they they did uh, do a social media uh, update, and then uh, at this point we have contacted any businesses or homes that we felt needed a little extra attention we 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 called them or we've sent somebody out to uh to notify them is that through facebook yes okay all right and uh anything else you wanted to add uh no that was it we're just Erica. watching everything hour by hour <laughs> okay well thank you so much for joining us i really appreciate you taking the time it's Erica Louie with the Oso Use Indian Band. So we'll wrap up, Bill, with a, a very important point that uh, Erica just mentioned is that emergency support services, ESS, is really intended for people who have uh, residences in this area. It's not meant for visitors, people who are at a campground or, or anything like that. Those people are asked if they can to please go back to their homes. It's for uh, people who live in the area who are displaced. Correct. Okay. All right, I think we'll leave it there then. It looks like we've wrapped up. So again, thank you so much for joining us. We'd like to thank all of our participants. Thank you for viewing this uh, live update. Please stay tuned to the RDOS social media channels and of course to other uh, two websites you can check, emergency.rdos.bc.ca. Uh, the main RDOS website is www.rdos.bc.ca. Any new information that becomes available will be posted on one of these two sites. 
for the partners who are uh, part of this as well and the other municipalities. You can go to their uh, social media channels, to their websites as well. We have been working very closely to get together, the RDOS, the um, other municipalities, and of course, OIB to get information out and to share um, in that responsibility. For now, we'll wrap it up. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, just